Hey guys, welcome back to another Fly Tying Tuesday with Avid Max. My name is Max and today we're gonna be tying the Boogeyman. Uh, it's another gala pattern, um, super effective uh, streamer pattern, tying in a bunch of different colors. Uh, you can mix and match materials, uh, kind of how you see fit. Uh, I'm gonna swap a couple things up today um, and I'm gonna be tying it on A-Rex TP610. Uh, this is the one uh, I'm gonna do two ones. Uh, you can traditionally do this with like a, you know, a two and then a one or a four and then a two. Um, just kind of depends on what size you're fishing and um, what kind of fish you're chasing. So it's a good hook, super strong. Scandinavian people really know their way around a sharp hook. So uh, I highly recommend them. Sticky, uh, very sharp. Uh, don't bend out on you. So uh, give them a shot. Shout out to A-Rex. Um, kick it off with uh, some UTC 140. This is the Blue Dunn. It's a nice gray color. Uh, we're going to be tying it in kind of like a gray, flashy color today. Um, like I said, you can swap up a lot of different uh, colors uh, along with the feathers and marabou and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, whatever strikes your fancy. Um, you're going with some thread wraps here on the shank. Just lay down a nice little thread base. I like to flatten my thread out. Um, as I'm sure if you've seen me tie before, the beard is gone. Uh, now I'm just rocking the mustache. You can't see the stash, but it's there. Um, so kind of a big change in my life. Um, I have like a six month year old or a six month old and uh, she keeps pulling on it and with wearing a mask every day and stuff it was kind of irritating so um, yeah now we got the stash rocking and the neck beard so uh, once we got our thread laid down on the shank there uh, got a piece of uh, gray marabou prepped here um, so I'm just gonna kind of gather about the length of the shank here to match my feather up and we're gonna tie that in there couple loose wraps and a couple tight wraps to secure it down. Work my way down the shank to about even with the barb here. And then to just make evenness in your tying, um, recommend not snipping it out immediately. Um, kind of working it up to almost behind the eye. Um, and then you kind of have a flat base to work with on top of the shank. And I feel like it holds the material a little bit better. So something to consider as you're tying this fly. So got our marabou tied in there. Big piece of marabou. Um, now we're gonna work in some barred gray and black schloppen from MFC. Uh, some pretty cool stuff if you've never tried it. The barred stuff, you know, just gives a nice different look, a little darker colors. Uh, so I'm going to kind of work my feather here. I always want to make sure that the V is going down to the shank that I'm tying it on. And tie the tip of this feather in here. And work it all the way back to my marabou. And I'll snip out my tip. Uh, tools help you out at the vise. Uh, so now I got a little vise pawn. Uh, this is a loon product. Um, it's magnetized, sticks sticks to nearly anything that you know will take it and uh, helps hold material all the way so i'm just going to hold that slopping back because we're going to do a dubbing loop and it just comes in handy to kind of keep things out of the way so kind of got my you know bobbin cradle here adjusted um, i like to once i make my dubbing loop make a nice big one and then i'm going to make sure that i kiss both of those pieces of thread together as I work them back to the marabou and the shopping and kind of bring my thread up to behind the eye again. So I've got my uh, dubbing tool here and I'm just going to lay that down and then how I have my bobbin cradle situated, I'm just going to sit on there as I kind of go to prep um, the, the dubbing we're going to use for the dubbing loop. So this is the holographic um, silver ice stub. Um, really nice, long fibers, so 
kind of puffs out a lot, especially when you do it in a loop. You got a lot of loose fibers, which looks good and pulses in the water. Um, very shiny, adds a lot of flash. So got some of that prepped here and I'm just gonna grab clumps of it and I'm gonna throw it in my dubbing loop. So, and I do that uh, so my uh, dubbing twister doesn't spin on me and uh, create like a uneven, um, you know, twist at the top of the thread there, going to the shank. So a little trick there. And I'm just gonna pile a fair amount in there. Uh, real loosely, kind of, so they're going all different directions. Like I said, this stuff, really long fibers compared to other ice dubs, uh, which is something you might've noticed. Uh, so there's a couple out of the ice dub collection that are like this um, and are good for tying streamers. Uh, the gold is really good. The red is good. Um, steely blue, um, the copper, um, there's a handful that, you know, are long fibers like this that have a lot different look to it as say, you know, caddis green or maybe the, uh, you know, peacock black. Uh, so just be aware of that when you're tying, um, especially using dubbing loops and whatnot. So got a bunch piled in there, um, kind of spread out, kind of see it there. So now I'm just gonna give it some spins and hold the line or hold the, the thread with my finger and then everything's gonna twist up tightly. Once that's all twisted up here. Got a nice dubbing loop here to work with and comb some of this out just a little bit. A lot of it's gonna get trapped by the, uh, the schlopping, so. Just making sure that you're aware of that. So, I got that twisted up here. I'm gonna flip my bobbin cradle here. And set that off to the side. As long as you do counterclockwise wraps, um, you don't necessarily need to do the half hitch. Or sorry, clockwise wraps. Especially if you built up a little bit of a thread base there. And it's all gonna get tied in anyway, so just save yourself a little time maybe. So now it's trapped. Got that in there and shorten up my thread. Capture that, make some wraps in front and behind. Then I can snip out my dubbing loop. So real bushy here. Um, might trim a little bit of it off here. And then I'll kind of pluck it out again. Good for sparkle minnows and stuff too, if you do the dubbing loop like this. Boogeyman is fairly simple pattern. Um, no silly legs in there. Um, it's just got a piece of mallard flank on top, so we'll get to that here in a sec. Uh, we're gonna take our schloppen and we're gonna wrap that. And we can kind of pluck out some of the dubbing as we're going through here. And with this, I am making uh, counterclockwise wraps. Um, which helps lay the feathers kind of back towards the marabou, which is what we want, and kind of gives it that nice profile. Add some extra tight wraps up here at the head, just to give it a little more, a little more juice in there. 
make a couple in front and behind, and then I can still snip out my schlopping feather. Give it a blow and kind of pull everything back and just make sure all those feathers are pulled back. Got a nice clean head here, little thread head. And things laid back there. So now I got my mallard flank. This is the, the done color, nice kind of dark gray. Um, got a couple pieces selected. Um, so as, as, I was, as I was selecting these, um, I was just looking for fairly straight feathers and one that kind of matches the size that I'm tying. So this is just gonna get tied directly down on top here. So kind of measure it out. Then I'll kind of pull back my feathers towards the base and can even kind of pull those out. So I got just the stem that I'm tying on here. So got that cleaned up and just a nice, going almost to the length of the marabou, uh, just a little bit shy of that. So kind of what you're looking for when you're selecting your feather. And that's gonna go directly on top of the hook here. And I'll tie that down. A couple tight wraps. And I can snip my stem out. Just a little thread head on there. This stem left over. Clean that up. Clean up a little bit of this schlopping on the sides. So, a little bit of flash in there, some dark color to look really good in the water. And uh, we'll do a quick loop finish here. And some super glue or Loctite um, is nice to just touch it up with, just to make sure those thread wraps don't ever come undone on you, especially when you got toothy critters chasing these. So there's the back half. So some good bulk to it, got some good flash. And we'll set that off to the side. So now we're gonna throw another size one predator hook in there, the trout predator. And uh, then same thing, got the 140 going here. Always flattening out my thread. Just better covering wraps. I said I always like throwing down a little bit of a thread base on whatever I'm tying. Just uh, real slim, maybe just covering the hook shank just so I feel like it holds material a little bit better. So now uh, we'll basically repeat the process. Um, first, we're gonna do our articulation though. So, got some senyos. Truder wire, this is red. Uh, I don't think it really matters. You know, it's gonna be covered up. Uh, we got some red beads in there, which is kind of why I went with the red. So uh, we're gonna do the red. And these are the tires beads and the large. Uh, these are red with the silver lining. Um, pretty cool. Good size for um, this fly and articulating stuff. So we're gonna tie that onto the shank here. And 
once I got that wire in there, leave that hanging to the back. And I've got my uh, Spirit River. These are the Real Eyes Plus. These are the Pearl. Um, nice little pupil on there. Um, it's a good size matchup for uh, the size we're tying today. Um, pretty cool. Something about these eyes that uh, just seem to work and attract fish. It's pretty realistic. So before I add my wire in again, I'm going to tie this down just so I don't build up too much bulk and unevenness. And these won't lay down nice and even. Uh, and these are going to go on the bottom side. So I can flip those and then I can start making my figure eight wraps to get them oriented straight perpendicular on the, uh, the hook shank here. Just enough here to secure them, um, making my figure eight, going some over and under and around. So it's pretty solid. I don't think they're gonna move around too much. And I just do that because if you don't, if you do it, you only add the other piece of wire in because you're trying to get it up as high as you can. Uh, some people like to go through the eye, um, so I'd recommend putting the eyes on first um, and then tying in the intruder wire. Um, I've never had a fly come apart on me uh, by just doing it this way. Um, you know, with my Dalai Lamas and stuff, I will go through the eye, but I'm typically using, a, you know, a braid or maybe even Dacron. I prefer the braid though. Um, it's uh, slim, flexible, and it doesn't take up as much uh, space in the, the hook, the hook eye. Um, so that's why I tend to just go like this because I don't want to eat up space uh, when I'm trying to thread, uh, you know, zero X through uh, a big streamer. So, so we got that tied in there. Grab our uh, beads, slide a couple of the beads on there. So we're gonna go two, uh, you could potentially go three, um, just to add a little more distance in between them. So once I got those on there, I'm gonna go up through the eye of my first fly I tied, and then back through both those beads again. Makes a nice little loop. And I wanna pull them so tight to where it's all the way up against. I wanna leave a little bit of a loop there so that it really swims nice in the water. I got my thread, you know, halfway on the shank and I'll just make some like loose wraps to kind of get it where I want and then I'll clean it up and then I'll start making some tightening wraps going down all the way to the beads. And I think I've talked about it before, um, you know, articulating flies, but I kind of lay one, the first, you know, piece of intruder wire that I tie in kind of off to the side so that when I do bring this one back over, it's like right on top and it kind of makes this loop stand directly upright. Um, so definitely a little trick or tip worth uh, trying. And I'll work that. All the way up and then make sure you got uh, some pliers handy or some dikes. Um, I'll leave a little bit here. <laughs> Guess these aren't as uh, sharp as they should be. Might have to go for the loon scissors here. Which isn't good for your scissors, but they've been through a lot already. So now I'll just clean that up. Make sure there's no frayed ends of the wire there. Cover that up with some thread wraps. And tighten that down. Uh, if you are worried about, you know, that wire slipping through, uh, you could always hit it with some super glue and wait a minute. I uh, really don't think it matters. Um, used to do it a lot and as I tie more um, and fish it more, I don't think it really matters and landed some big fish on that back hook with nothing happening. So once I got that in there, I'm gonna grab another piece of marabou here. We already got it selected. The bushy piece of marabou in the gray. one we're gonna clean up a little bit I just kind of got a nice tip there and 
tie that on right over the top so it's creating some nice nice bulk in between the flies covering up those beads a little bit so you can see them when they get wet when everything's pulsing in the water but kind of covers them up when you're just looking at the fly so once I do that kind of lay them down make a couple loose wraps and I want to make sure that I kind of like round them around the shank so it kind of covers the whole whole area so got that in there make some tighter wraps to kind of secure everything down and same thing lock that marabou up to just behind the, the dumbbell eyes and we can trim out our stem marabou I got another piece of uh, schlop in here. So do the same thing we did before and tie that onto the shank. Um, still didn't quite have the V that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna grab another piece here. It'd be a little bit bigger feather. You know, if you can try to make, you know, proportionally front fly a little bigger, bushier than the back fly. Kind of has a little bit more of a taper to it. I don't think it matters a whole lot, but just something to look for as you're grabbing feathers. And then we're going to go back for that holographic ice stub. Get throw that in there. Throw a little more in there. And spin her up. Same deal if you can taper it a little bit, you know, start slim at the top and then kind of work your way to getting a little bit thicker. Um, but once you kind of brush it out, I don't know if it really matters all that much. making wraps. Going up to right behind the dumbbell eyes. And we'll stop right behind the dumbbell eyes. Can let it hang. And I'll secure it front and behind a couple wraps. And then I can trim out my, my loop. Brush things out a little bit. Pretty good there. I'm gonna grab my slopping again. And same thing, counterclockwise wraps. Make sure everything lays back. And we can tease some of the dubbing fibers out. They stay stringy as we're wrapping up here. Make sure you don't break your slopping feather on the hook point. Definitely done that before.
So looking pretty good there. Fortunately, thing looks pretty good. Now I've got another uh, mallard feather here. Selected out. Just kind of hoping it was going to be the right size. Looks like it might work out. So kind of green back the bottom of the feather. Make sure it's even on both sides. And it's going to go directly on top of the, the shank there again. some tight securing wraps here. I'm gonna go figure eight wrap around the dumbbell eyes and that really holds everything in place. And that stem's not going anywhere and the feather shouldn't move on you. Snip out the stem and uh, looks pretty good. Now we're gonna hit it with uh, some Senyo's laser dub. This is the silver minnow belly. It's a little lighter. Um, so we might throw a little bit of dashes of black sharpie in there to kind of match the marabou and um, the schlaffen in there. So cool stuff. Um, this recipe actually calls for sculpin wool, uh, which is another hairline product. Uh, typically, it's a little bit thicker. Um, it's got a little more uh, bulk to it when you're like tying it in. This stuff's a little stringier and longer. Um, so it just requires a little, maybe a little bit more trimming um, and you're trimming off kind of like a little more sophisticatedly. Um, so tying it in basically the same way though. So when I'm doing this, grab a chunk out of the bag and I'm gonna keep pulling it apart over and over. So I get them lined up and they're kind of even and I don't have a bunch of stringy, stringy fibers on the ends. But once I got that, I'm gonna lay that down directly on top of the shank here. I'm gonna make one wrap very close to the dumbbell eyes, another wrap, and one more real tight wrap to kind of secure everything. And then I'm going to repeat the process on the bottom. Uh, this is where having a rotary vise tying streamers really comes in handy. So I'll grab another clump, start picking that apart. I'll split it right down the middle. And same thing right behind the bead or right behind the dumbbell eyes and make sure that I'm on those same wraps because now I've put, you know, five wraps or so on top. Now I got six. So I just want to make sure that I'm not building up too much bulk on this top side. So that's why you just keep your wraps fairly slim but tight uh, to hold everything down. And then I'm going to pull both of those back and I'm going to make another wrap in front of both of them a couple wraps kind of pulls everything back there grab another chunk from the bag my thread is still behind the eyes so we're gonna do this one more time um, this just kind of creates some good uh, mass behind the head so got those kind of plucked out and do one tight wrap, another tight wrap, a tight wrap. And make sure they're situated on top there. And we'll repeat it one more time on the bottom. Right on the bead there. Wrap, trapped a bit. Make sure that I'm keeping them separated, I'm not trapping the ones that I already did. So make another tight wrap or two. 
And then same thing, kind of peel both those back and work it up on the eyes. Brush and kind of make sure everything's going the same direction or the direction that it should be. So we're going to now repeat the process again, right in uh, front of the dumbbell eyes. So pluck out my, my laser dub and uh, kind of want to get slimmer as I'm going forward. So lay this one down right on top. Good way to keep it close and not slide forward on you is to do a figure eight wrap back to the eyes again. Do the same thing on the bottom side here. Three secure tight wraps, pull everything back and build up a little thread dam, working it tight up against that laser dub. So I think that's all we're going to get there. Got a nice bulky head on there and make a little bit more of a thread dam so everything's going back and, and i'm going to do a quick whip finish Now I'm going to take my dubbing brush and I'm going to pull the top ones straight up and the bottom ones straight down. He's got a nice little mohawk going on. Uh, doing this kind of technique is a good uh, way to kind of lead into like tying a dungeon or something. Uh, kind of helps you get the, the practice uh, without the slickness of deer hair. Um, so this kind of grabs a little bit better. But you want everything very tight in here so that when you do trim it or you know you are pulling everything back, everything stays tight in the head. So looking pretty good there. So you could honestly fish this fly as is right now. You know, I could just comb everything back. You now I got a nice big head on there, on the front, on the back. Probably trim the bottom up a little bit so it doesn't uh, affect the, the hook point. But just to give you an idea of what it would look like. of everything pulled back just like that. Uh, pretty good looking fly just like that too. So definitely an option. Um, we're gonna trim this one up though um, and it makes just a little slimmer, slimmer head on there. So pull those back up and down. And uh, this can be a little time consuming so Sure, our video editing guy will speed it up for you. So to do my trimming, um, got the five inch loon razor scissors, uh, sharp. So I kind of want to just get everything situated how I want when I'm trimming it. You know, the, the bottom side is going to be very slim um, and the top side is going to have a little more bulk to it. So kind of start trimming away here. Uh, you can always take off more. Just remember that when you're when you're doing this. Um, so always kind of start 
to art fairly slim and if you can try to like round everything There you have it, the boogeyman, good articulated fly.